Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this Cinema 4D tutorial, I want to talk about um, the MoGraph matrix object. So let's have a quick look at it. If we go to the MoGraph menu down to matrix, it produces this. Now you may or may not have come across this before, but if we look at its object properties down here, it looks very, very similar to the cloner object. Okay, so it's like the cleaner object right let's create an object cube let's uh, just size it a little bit let's make it 40 in the XYZ let's give it a little bit of a fillet as well not that much maybe a couple of centimeters something like that and we'll bring down its subdivision and just to illustrate my point in a moment I'm going to add some um, segments to this cube as well let's give it five in each axis axis even and I'm going to put a material on it as well, just so we can see it a little bit better. So we've got this cube, we put it in our matrix, and absolutely nothing happens. And uh, affecting none of this, you know, obviously affects the matrix itself, but not the object. So what is the point of this? What What is a use case for the matrix object? Well, I'm going to get rid of the matrix and set up a cloner to show you what I'm talking about. So if we've created a cloner. I'm going to pop my cube inside this cloner object and uh, let's select the cloner and choose grid array and we get something like this. Now if I wanted to affect the position of my clones I could maybe do that with a deformer um, but obviously I do not want to put this deformer so let's create our deformer so uh, let's go for a bulge now, if I was to put this bulge in the cloner, it would actually clone the bulge itself. And if I put it in the cube, it would be affecting each cube. So if I turn it up now, you can see that I'm making each cube bulge. But what if I wanted to do that for the whole whole lot? Well, what we'd normally do is uh, create a null for these objects. So if I um, select both the cloner and the bulge and then press Alt-G, it will put them both in this group and now the bulge will affect the whole lot. So if I bring up the strength now, you can see this is the type of thing that we get. Now, this might be the kind of result that you want. Um, but as you can see, the bulge isn't just affecting the position of our clones. It's actually affecting the geometry of our clones. You can see there's some stretching going on here with this cube. And same here. So you can see that it's actually deforming the points of our, of our clones there. So that may not be what you want. So let's take our cloner and bulge out of our null, get rid of our null, and actually let's set our bulge strength back down to zero. This is where the matrix object comes in. So let me explain. I'll get rid of the bulge for now and take our cube out of our cloner. So let's create our matrix object again. What the matrix object actually do does is it ge it doesn't generate anything. It literally just holds pos uh, position data. That's all it does. But we can utilize this to get a result that we might want. So what we do is we put our cube in our cloner. And instead of having it set to grid array, we can set this to object. And what's the object that we want to put our clones over? It's this matrix. So if we go to the cloner and drag our matrix into this object field here, you can see now that we've got a very, very similar result to what we had before with just the cloner. But if we now create our bulge uh, deformer and put it under the matrix and turn up the strength, you can see now that instead of actually deforming the uh, mesh of our clones, we are just deforming the space in which they exist which may be the result that you that you want and it's not just the bulge we can do it for other things as well oh, let's just give it a kick up the ass there we go uh we can do it for a twist so if we put the twist in the matrix we can actually twist the space in which these clones exist instead of instead of the actual clones geometry so that's a use case for the matrix, and uh, that's what it does. So if you, you know, if you ever want to um, deform a bunch of clones but not their actual 
geometry, you just wanted to form the position or the volume they exist in. Well, it would be the positions that they occupy. This is how you'd go about it. Okay, guys, thanks for listening. As always, you can check me out on digitalme.uk. You can also follow me on social media. Uh, links in the description. If you'd like to support Digital Meat, you can do that via Patreon or the donation page on my website. But if you'd like extra content, you can become a Prime member at digitalmeat.uk. All right, guys, that's it. Bye. (laughs) 